Hi all, welcome to Smart Catalyst. With prelims approaching within 166 days, hope your preparations are going good and our Smart Catalyst online program is adding value to your preparation. So today we are going to see the prelims analysis for the date 18-12-2018. So today these are the topics which we are going to analyze for the prelims. So the first one is places in news which is related to the Zambia. Second one it is the India Maldives cooperation as India has aided 1.4 billion dollar to Maldives. Third one is related to PM Swastiya Suraksha Yojana. Fourth one is Pratan Mantri Ujwala Yojana. And next one is Ekalavya model of residential schools in the scheduled tribal regions. And then the in year end review of uh, science and technology ministry in the year 2018. And next one is the Basha Sangam, which is under the Ek Bharat Shrasta Bharat campaign. And next one is related to the Aadhaar to be accessed by the private companies. Next one is about the privileges motion. Next is about the Indo-Tibetan border police. And the last article is related to the climate change. And uh, despite intense rainfall, the world's water supply is in decreasing. And we have to analyze what are the reasons for that. So the first one for the prelims analysis is places in news and this is related to Zambia. So what's in news is that vice president has said that India and Zambia relations are historically strong and it should be enhanced further. So this Zambia is an African country which is bordered by eight other countries which is in the northern side by the Congo and then Tanzania. There is a small border of Malawi. Then it is Mozambique. Zimbabwe, Botswana and a small portion of the border is shared with Namibia and at last it is shared in the northwestern region by Angola. So now we shall see some of the geographical features of this Zambia country. So a major river called the Zambezi river flows through this uh, country of Zambia and there is a lake called Lake Bangulu. In the northern region of this lake there is the Muchinga mountains and also the world famous and the world's largest Victoria Falls is located on the border of Zambia on the river Zambezi which is also bordering the Zimbabwe and uh, it is uh, separated from Zimbabwe Zimbabwe by the lake Kariba and uh, Zambezi river also flows through this and the capital of Zambia is Lusaka. Also we have to note here that Zambia is a member of International Solar Alliance which was uh, initiated by India and France in 2015 in accordance with the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement. So the next article for prelims is India Maldives relations. As the Maldives president has planned for a three-day visit in India, this uh, Maldives-India uh, relations becomes important for the prelims. So uh, there are 10 reasons why Maldives is important for India. So the first one is its strategic location and uh, it comprises of 1200 coral islands and it also ensures uninterrupted energy supplies to the countries like China, Japan and India. So for this significance, China is sending uh, its naval ships to harness these natural resources from Maldives so this becomes the heart of international geopolitics and uh, China through its string of pearls policy it is encircling the Indian Ocean region by creating the naval bases in such small island countries so China's massive economic presence in the Maldives is a major concern for India so Maldives becomes important for security and defense related concerns so cooperation in terms of security is needed between India and Maldives also Maldives is a member of SARC so it becomes significant for India and uh, uh, during the Yamin period, radicalization grew rapidly and because of this, a number of civilian and uh, other related concerns are taking place in Maldives. To arrest this, our uh, Indian uh, army has undergone the operation Cactus where in which the Indian army has sent its uh, uh, naval troops to Maldives to fight against the insurgencies by the Sri Lankan Tamil Elam. Apart from this, India and Maldives share ethnic, linguistic, cultural, religious and commercial links also. 
So India was the was among the first to recognize Maldives after its independence in 1965. And a wide Indian diaspora is also present in the Maldives. So it becomes an important destination for education, medical treatment, recreation and business. So because of these reasons, India-Maldives cooperation should have to be enriched in all dimensions, especially in the security and defense purposes. So based on this, India and Maldives having cooperation on areas of facilitation of visa, cultural cooperation as I have already said and a memorandum of understanding for establishing a mutual cooperation to improve the ecosystem for the agri-businesses as there are a, a, a wide population of Indian diaspora present in the Maldives. And a joint declaration has also been signed for cooperation in the field of information and communication technology and electronics. So these cooperation should enrich the security in the Indian Ocean region. So here is the map of Maldives and uh, Mali is the capital of Maldives and there is the Arabian Sea which is situated on the western side and is comprising of many atolls which are coral islands. And also India has a proposed a friendship bridge on the Hulhuli island of these Maldives. So on this a three day visit of the Maldivian president to India. India has announced a 1.4 billion financial assistance package for Maldives. So this was weighed down by 3 billion dollar debt which is Maldives is having with China and in order to support Maldives. So among this 1.4 billion dollar uh, aid to Maldives, a portion of it will form a budgetary support for the Maldives and a currency swap agreements were also included within these 1.4 billion dollars and a concessional line of credit. So as we all know this line of credit is also similar to the loan arrangement. For example, if Maldives has been given of 1.4 billion dollar among which how much they are using for infrastructural or any other purpose will be accounted as the loan amount. Suppose if they are using only 1 billion dollar out of this 1.4 billion dollar, only for this 1 billion dollar, uh, a concessional interest rate will be levied from this uh, loan amount. So this forms the line of credit. And the concessional line of agreement means the rate of interest for this uh, loan which has been used from this 1.4 billion dollar will be uh, having only concessional interest rates. So here it is significant to note what is this currency swap agreement. See, it is nothing but swapping of two currencies. For example, there is an Indian currency and a Maldivian currency. So a loan amount that is a principal loan amount in this currency swap agreement will be paid to Maldivian country and wherein which the interest will be paid by Maldives in the Indian currency itself within the specified period as mentioned in this currency swap agreement. So apart from this in a joint statement Maldives has reaffirmed that its government will focus on the India's first policy in its governmental initiatives. Apart from this, both of them have uh, agreed to cooperate in areas of fisheries, tourism, transportation, connectivity, health and education, information technology and energy resources. So the next article we are going to see is the Pratan Mantri Swastiya Suraksha Yojana. So this article has been taken from PIB. So through this Pratan Mantri Swastiya Suraksha Yojana, a uh, union cabinet has approved to establish two aims that is all india institute for medical sciences has to be uh, established in madurai in tamil nadu and bb nagar in telangana so here we have to see what is this pratan mantri swasthya suraksha yojana for prelims perspective so this is to create a balance in healthcare system as we all know that the health expenditure is uh, only about 0.6 percentage of india's gdp and now it has been uh, enhanced to 2.5 g percent of gdp it is important to develop the health infrastructure so for developing this health infrastructure establishment of aims through this pratan mantri swasthya suraksha yojana becomes important so uh, this mainly aims to correct the regional imbalances for the availability of affordable and reliable tertiary healthcare services. Though through this Ayushman Bharat scheme,
primary health centers and wellness centers are to be established in the rural areas this tertiary health services are lagging in the remote areas so for this these aims hospital should be established in many parts of the country so as to ensure the tertiary health care services at an affordable and reliable prices and also to augment the facilities for quality med medical education in the country so one such problem is a uh, non availability of doctors in the rural and other remote places so to ensure this quality medical education should be provided in many parts of the country to establish a good number of doctors available in these remote areas also so it addresses the shortfall of the healthcare professionals in the region apart from setting up of aims like institutes in these regions it is the scheme is also empowering to upgrade the existing government medical colleges or institutions in various parts of the country so by upgradation these government medical colleges will also serve the need for reliable tertiary health care services to the people so all these upgraded facilities will be available to all the categories of patients coming to these government medical institutes so thereby this scheme pitches to have an inclusive health care so the next one for the prelims is the pradhan mantri ujwala yojana so this article has been taken from pib so uh, the cabinet has approved to expand the beneficiary list under this pradhan mantri ujwala yojana so here we have to see what is this pradhan mantri ujwala yojana so it is nothing but to replace the unclean cooking fuels which is used in the rural areas like using of wooden logs for cooking this may contribute to co2 emissions and thereby it also leads to in indoor air pollution by which uh, the women and children are going to be the most affected and vulnerable so to curb this union government with its uh, pradhan mantri ujwala scheme they are going to replace these types of unclean cooking fuels with clean and more efficient lpg which is the liquefied petroleum gas this initiative is also acting as a tool to ensure the women's empowerment in rural india in which these lpg connections will be given in the name of women who are uh, under the bpl households so the through this social and economic caste census data which has been provided to the ministry of petroleum and natural gas will find the beneficiaries for this lpg connection services so uh, here it is to be noted that this ujwala yojana is under the ministry of petroleum and natural gas which is Uh, the only nodal agency having this only scheme to be implemented in the rural india so in order to have a successful implementation of this scheme district nodal officers of the oil marketing companies will be uh, employed in the uh, rural areas to implement this scheme properly so in news is apart from the socio economic caste census covered bpl households the beneficiary list have been widened so now sc and st households which are not in the within the socio economic caste census will also be eligible for this scheme and the beneficiaries of the pradhan mantri avas yojana so which is a housing scheme under the ministry of uh, uh, housing and urban affairs and uh, they are also eligible for these uh, uh, lpg free lpg connections and uh, antyodaya anna yojana beneficiaries will also be included under the scheme forest dwellers and most backward classes are also included and uh, t and xt garden tribes will also be eligible for the scheme and apart from this people residing in islands and river islands will also get the free lpg connections through this ujwala yojana apart from this uh, cash assistance of about rupees 1600 will be given for one time for this lpg connections so through this scheme they have targeted to cover about 8 crore of the rural people mainly uh, to have the free lpg connections through this scheme so as of now about 5 crore people have benefited through this ujwala scheme so the next article is about the ekalavya model residential schools in the scheduled tribal areas 
So in the union budget of 2018, the finance minister in his speech has said that by 2022, every block which is having about 50% of the ST population, which is at least 20,000 of the tribal people, will have an Ekalavya model residential school, which is uh, on par with the Navodhya Vidyalayas, which is running in other parts of the country. So, this Ekalavya model residential schools will have a capacity of about uh, 480 students in each school, which will be set up in all states and union territories coming under Article 275 Clause 1, in which it states that improvement of rural infrastructure in the tribal areas. So for establishing this Ekalavya model residential schools, a minimum of 15 acres of land is needed. So it is also mandated to have a better infrastructure facilities catering to the needs of the academic education. Apart from this, the extracurricular activities should also have the infrastructural facilities like playground, uh, building of hostels will be provided in this Ekalavya model schools. So to ensure a high quality education to these scheduled tribe children, a computer lab facility will also be established along with teacher resource room in these Ekalavya model residential schools. So this would serve the purpose of giving high quality education to these masses also. It should also be noted that so besides providing these uh, Ekalavya model residential schools in the scheduled tribe area, residential ashram schools will also be established under the establishment of ashram schools in the tribal subplan areas which is a centrally sponsored scheme. So the recent news is cabinet has approved to revamp this Eclavia model residential schools. For this they have proposed that an autonomous society under the ministry of tribal affairs that which is the nodal agency to implement these uh, Eclavia model residential schools will manage and oversee these residential schools in the tribal areas. Apart from this the upgradation for the existing uh, Eclavia model residential schools will be done on the need basis. So so for this rupees 5 crore per school has been allocated in this newly proposed uh, initiative and also as I have said that these residential schools should also have facilities for the extracurricular activities like sports facilities. For this about uh, 163 tribal dominated districts have been named for creating these sports facilities with 5 crore of financial assistance which has to be constructed by within the year of 2022. Also in the proposal they have enhanced the grant amount from 10 lakh to 20 lakh which has to be revised for every 5 years. So with the full implementation of these proposals the scheduled tribe children will also get benefited and becomes in par with the mainstream education as provided in the other parts of the country. So the next article is the year end review of the Department of Science and Technology under the Ministry of Science and Tech. In 2018, many new initiatives have been taken by this Ministry of Science and Technology, which is going to further the uh, development and prosperity of the country. So one among this is the National Mission on Interdisciplinary Cyber Physical Systems. So this addresses the increasing technological requirements of the society. So this mission will act as a pathway for establishing the next gen technology among the Indian masses. So for this various intergovernmental and inter academia people will be consulted and through this the innovative methods will be implemented in the Indian region. So in order to curb the climate change that is the greenhouse gas emissions from the residential buildings a cooling solution for the residential area has been proposed through this global cooling price initiative. Through this at least five times less climate impact than today's standard products will be achieved. So this becomes one of the major initiative to curb the climate change and to create the climate resilient buildings uh, mainly in the residential area. 
and the third one is about vayu which is the wind augmentation and purifying ink unit so this is to combat the vehicular pollution thereby reducing the ambient air pollution levels uh, ejected by the vehicles so this will also target the particulate matter of 2.5 particulate matter of 5 and other air pollution related pollutants apart from this the ministry of science and technology has also inaugurated the first super critical brayton psych co2 test facility at uh, indian institute of sciences in bangalore so this brayton cycle co2 test facility will pave the way for highly efficient compact power plants that is to generate the maximum energy from the renewable sources like solar and wind uh, this brayton cycle co2 test facility will uh, serve its purpose so the next article for plums is about basha sangam the ambitious ek bharat shrestha bharat campaign which has been initiated in 2015 to commemorate the 140th birth anniversary of sardar patel in order to celebrate the unity in diversity so following this this basha sangam will also enrich this ek bharat and shrestha bharat scheme established under the ministry of human resource development so it is objectivized to provide multilingual exposure to students so this shall be accomplished through schools and educational institutions it is to familiarize every child with simple dialogues in all the 22 languages that has been scheduled under schedule 8 of the constitution so this eighth schedule lists the official languages of india so this will be coming under the department of school education and literacy which is under the premises of the ministry of hrd and was widely accepted by all states and union territories so this will be a platform for celebrating the linguistic diversity of india and thereby promoting the concept of unity in diversity here it is also important to note that the national curriculum framework of 2005 emphasizes that the primary education should be imparted in the mother tongue for the children of that region this was also an objective in article 300a where in which the instructions will be given in the mother tongue for the minority children also this national curriculum framework which is for a three language formula where in which the children should be familiarized with at least three official languages as listed in the eighth schedule of the constitution among this the first language should be the mother tongue of the child or it should be the regional languages and apart from this another one should be hindi especially in the non hindi speaking southern states and if it is a hindi speaking region the other two uh, languages may be of any other as wished by the children or the parents so among this uh, sanskrit should also be imparted through this three language formula so the next article is laws to be amended to let the private companies to use aadhar for the know your customer norms as we all know that the recent supreme court judgment on aadhar states that the aadhar unique identification number should comply with the right to privacy which has been enshrined in the article 21 of constitution apart from this the supreme court has also said this aadhar bill as a money bill and an act has been passed through this so in this judgment the supreme court has ordered that these aadhar unique identification numbers for knowing the customers should not be used by the private uh, companies or for opening the bank accounts or for issuing the sim cards so here you have to note that the section 57 of the aadhar act states that this aadhar card is mandatory for opening of the bank accounts and issuing of sim cards so this was struck by the supreme court and stated that the aadhar is not necessary so this becomes contentious for the private entities and banks so the cabinet has approved 
to amend the existing laws to provide a legal backing for seeding of this biometric Aadhaar card. Biometric Aadhaar card with mobile numbers and bank accounts as an optional know your customer. So this is not mandatory but it, is, it shall be a voluntary. So for this the union cabinet has approved amendments to the Telegraph Act and Prevention of Money Laundering Act after the Supreme Court has imposed restrictions on the use of Aadhaar by the private companies. So the changes that are going to be made will be affected through the original Aadhaar Act itself. So if this Aadhaar data has been used for this know your customer by these private entities and banks, they are liable for the protection of these biometric data. If these biometric data are violated or leaked, they will be subjected to a strict punishment and punity actions. So the government has also proposed an imprisonment of up to 10 years for those who are attempting to the hack the Aadhaar data. Also, the government proposed that the children who are enrolled in these Aadhaar by giving their biometric data in the name of Bal Aadhaar or Blue Aadhaar can opt out of the Aadhaar database when they attain the age of 18. And other documents such as passport and government identity proof may also be used for the identity verification by these private companies. So the relaxation of usage of Aadhaar on one hand and stringent punishment for those who are violating the Aadhaar data is on the other hand becomes beneficial for both the citizens as well as the private companies. And so it should be noted that this is a voluntary submission of the Aadhaar data to these private entities and it is not a forced or coercive need for these customers. So the next article for prelims is the, about the privilege motion which is alternatively passed in the parliament. This article has been taken from Indian Express. So for uh, prelims polity, this what is this privilege motion and uh, what is this privilege committee who are going to scrutinize about this privilege motion and uh, other related committee which is the public account committee in the Rafael issue we are going to analyze. As we all know that the recent Supreme Court judgment on the Rafael deal which stated that it has no complexity or any other issues pertain to this Rafael purchase. As we all know that the recent Supreme Court judgment on the Rafael deal has uh, uh, said that there are no issues pertaining to this Rafael purchase. There is also no commercial favoritism over this Rafael purchase. So this is neither way violating the nation's security or it is underwent through a corrupted procedure. So the Supreme Court has said that there is no wrongdoing in this Rafael purchase or there is neither any security violation for the nation. But this Supreme Court order was based on the Comptroller and Auditor General report which is not subjected to the scrutiny by the Public Accounts Committee. So this was stated by the opposition party which is the Congress party against the ruling BJP. So based on this both the parties are alternatively moving the privilege motions in the Lok Sabha. So here we have to know what is this privilege motion. So before this what are all the privileges conferred to the parliamentarians we have to see it is nothing but rights and immunities enjoyed by the members of the parliament so these rights are individually as well as collectively applicable to the mps in order to effectively discharge their functions so if any of the rights and immunities are disregarded it will be regarded as a breach of privilege and punishable under the law of the parliament for this, a notice will be moved as a form of a motion in either Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha against those who being held guilty of breach of these privileges. So what is giving the legal backup for this privileges motions are, so the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha rule books are governing this privileges of the parliamentarians. Here the uh, if any privilege motion is moved, the speaker of the Lok Sabha or the chairperson of the Rajya Sabha will first scrutinize privilege motion passed by the members of the parliament. 
after this it will be subjected to the privilege committee of the parliament so here what is the composition of the privilege committee has to be seen for the prelims in lok sabha the speaker will nominate 15 members and in Rajya Sabha, the chairperson will nominate 10 persons for this privileges committee. So, this privileges committee comprises of 25 members, among which 15 from Lok Sabha and 10 from Rajya Sabha. So, as I said early that the Congress parliamentarians have raised this issue because this Supreme Court order is not based on the Public Accounts Committee report, rather only based upon the CAG report. He, so here it is important to know what is this public accounts committee. So this public accounts committee will comprise the same 15 persons from Lok Sabha and only 7 members from Rajya Sabha. And this will be elected through proportional representation among the parliamentarians of either house. The tenure of these members in the public accounts committee will be of 1 year. So here it is to be noted that a minister can, ne can never be a member of the public accounts committee. So if in UPSC, if they ask that whether a minister is a member of public accounts committee, it is a false statement. So the next article for prelims is the Indo-Tibetan border police should only be deployed for the border related tasks. So this article has been taken from Indian Express. So we know that under the Central Armed Police Forces, there will be seven forces who are employed for internal security and border guarding purposes. So among these forces, the Indo-Tibetan Border Police Forces will be employed in the Indo-China border to deal with the border related issues. So the news is now these border Indo-Tibetan Border Police Forces are utilized for internal security purposes and other nux anti naxalite operations. So this becomes a overburden for these police forces who are originally employed for dealing with only border related issues. So here it is essential to know about this Indo-Tibetan police forces. So as I said that it is one among the five of the central armed police forces. This has been created only after the Indochina war of 1962 to deal with the border related tasks. So this will be directly under the command of the Union Home Ministry. So today we have done with the prelims articles. Thank you.